Hi everyone, it's Mary Jo. Welcome back to my channel. This is our reading for the full moon lunar eclipse that we're going to have in Aquarius on August 7, 2017. Um, the polar shifted, remember in May, the pole shifted from North Node is now in our um, Leo, and South Node is in our Aquarian polarities. Okay, they're the opposite, opposites. Um, so we want to say to our karma and our dharma, okay, the, the karma is your south node and the dharma is your north node, okay, where you're feeling pulled and where your life is being driven to, where your karma is um, the past, past lives and releasing and the things you kind of came in with that are comfortable or uh, that you're realizing are things that go with an ease of flow in your life. But remember with Aquarius, it's about releasing with calm and healing with calm any traumas tragedies stress abuse pain suffering that we brought in from our ancestors or ourselves from other lives our contemporary family and people that have imprinted on us since our early environment okay and we don't want to pass it to our descendants too but that energy is in the line of our blood our dna so I will do this reading for you. I'm using my fairy oracle, the wild wisdom of the fairy oracle. I usually like to do that for our full moons and new moons, especially with any major event, especially like the eclipses. And August 21st will be a new moon in Leo again, which we had last um, uh, month, but this one is gonna be a total solar eclipse, so I'll have a video up for that at the time. So we're going to look at this here, and thank you again, everybody who's been watching and sharing. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing, too. And if you haven't, you might want to. This way you'll get noticed when the videos are up. All right, so we have this air energy, Aquarian energy, okay? The planet that rules it is Uranus. So this is shocking change. This is freedom. This is your genius factor. These are things that are being pulled in from other realms. This is like the glyph looks like a satellite for Uranus, right? And for Aquarius, it is, it looks like waves, but it's not water, even though it's a water bearer, but it is about energy. It's waves of energy, electricity. It's a very electric. That's why Uranus is about technology and electric things or electronic things. And Aquarius is the outer world, the outer realm. Okay, so with this energy, we're talking macrocosmically, yes, but also in the microcosm, and for yourself, all of us, where things in our lives are going to be electrified, things coming to us out of the blue, epiphanies, clarification, um, shocking change, maybe good, maybe not so good, but it's all part of our storyline, all right? But when we have this energy uh, connected with our full moon in Aquarius, all right, we're going to be looking at our emotions, which is more of a mental realm, Aquarius, okay? They can be very dismissive, very curt at times, very cool, you know? Um, but that's the air signs. But with the lunar eclipse on the full moon, it's your emotional cycle, okay? And your re emotional response, all right? Now, remember that the energies last six months to a year. So you're still kind of feeling the waves of the last six months in February when we had our eclipses to now. Think about what's come to pass, what's culminated in your life, all right? But this is going to be about healing for you. And it's in the area of your life that maybe is very direct to you. So you would look in your chart and you would see where the moon falls in Aquarius and what house in your chart and where uh, the sun falls also. The sun and moon, well, this is for the full moon. So they're opposites each other, okay? So you wanna look at where it's gonna fall around 15 degrees. That is the area in your life this will be affecting you. And when it takes place, you'll find yourself dealing in ways more emotionally than intellectually, mentally in that area of your house, like it's in your fifth house. It might be in children, um, pleasure, recreation, creativity, re vacation, projects that you're working on. If it's in your first house, it's your ego. Your second house would be money and love, you see, etc. That's how it would affect you, and you'll be more strongly emotional about it at this time. But it is a part of it that is about uh, healing, all right? And especially for people who are more spiritually involved or emotionally sensitive, okay, or empaths, 
Um, the, the eclipses stimulate deep, deep emotion, okay, deep memories and even wisdom from the past within your subconscious, like the Akashic records, things that we don't remember. But they awaken these feelings, okay? So they're here to show us where we need to develop, okay, is what I'm getting at. Where do we need to grow and mature? And that's what it's here for. So we're starting off with the golden gift, number 24. Okay, that's a six balance energy. Now we know with this beautiful here, she's got a full moon here. Beautiful, very appropriate. And the golden gift says magical help is on its way. It's perfect because with the eclipse, we know help is on the way. The eclipses are awakening things in us that have been stirring deep inside or lying dormant for some of us that really aren't aware of these things. And it kind of is like a purging. It drums it up. It brings it up to the surface. Just like, you know, the water is deep, right? You don't know how deep the water is until you dive in, right? Because you can't always see down to the depths. It's not always clear water. So your emotions are like that. So right now we want you to be reflective and like the water, but we want you to be calm with this Aquarius energy. And the same golden gift. So this is the help that we're facing to try and bring us into balance. She is wearing gold. Now the gold is that alchemical process of change. So with this lunation and the full moon bringing things to light, we do want to see clearly the transformation that can happen. We don't want it to be occluded, okay, or blocked in any way. We want to take this information that they're offering us and say, why are you here? What are you here to show me? What am I here to grow from? What is it that I'm to mature in my soul and in the evolution? Let's see what the book says. All right, a healing is coming that is lifting and dissolving. Depression, bringing sensual bliss, calming your frustration, and any anger you have felt towards others who you feel have hurt you. Your emotions are stabilizing and running fresh and pure again. Stagnation is leaving, and you will now receive clear fairy communications with healing modalities, which will work with your energy. Wear gold, which will amplify the message of this gentle healing card. Know that while the dear queen is gentle, her power is enormous, and her touch is transformation itself. Shape-shifting, hmm. Empathy with gentle forms of nature. Feminine power, return of sexual feelings of sensuality. So that's very raw uh, energy, sensual energy. But we are saying this is being offered to clear. Now, gold we know is a conduit, right? It is about transformation, but it's a conduit. So um, even if the color gold or if you're wearing gold or if you even have some stones or any quartz, it might have some gold flecks in it. Whatever it is, it's about a healing for you. So this is what this card is offering you at this time of this lunation with our eclipse. Okay? And let's see what's coming. Now we have dark moon, which is great because when we have our total eclipse of the sun, uh, in the new moon, the new moon is the darkest phase. Well, it's always dark. The moon has no light. The sun reflects it. So the, the earth blocks the light of the sun from the moon. Okay, and then when the eclipse happens, so it really looks like a dark moon. This is saying maturation, growing up, introspection and know thyself, another six number of balance. So we know we're talking about this very um, harmonic number. Okay, we know that six wants to bring balance. So put it in a snapshot of your life. If you don't know your natal chart and what houses these are affecting you, look at it in what part of your life right now you need some help that will be coming. Maturation and ev evolution, okay? Desensitizing in your life. And with this dark moon, you wanna go deep. Go very deep, dive deep in. Go to those emotions. So we have two cards with the moons on, on it. So I, I love this because the fairies and spirit, this energy is resonating to what's going on right now. Where is there dissonance in your life? Where are there things going on? What's the matter in your life? The matter that's upsetting you, causing dif dissonance. So you wanna work on that. Dive deep, 
Look at what's really going on emotionally with you. What is not clearing your life? What is not clearing your mind? What is not clearing your heart? Is it about a job? Is it about a relationship? Is it about your health? Whatever it is in your life or what house it's falling in, okay? Because this is where we want to face and embrace these things and look to how we can help heal these things or even times they have to look to others. So with the fairy cards, it's talking about being in nature and healing in nature or other groups of people it sits very Aquarian. Maybe we'll help you with this. There's so many of us out there that are aligned and that's our tribe that they're feeling the same thing. You can reach out to these people. You can find these people, okay, to help with healing. So this card is about being interpreted as um, change, as the moon times move to darkening, which was what will be coming when we have the new moon eclipse. It's a time of understanding the frailties of the self and understanding the wisdom of your years on this earth that it's taught you. Knowing that there's nothing that can be done at this time and knowing that you need to understand where you are responsible for the current situation. Learning and taking ownership of responsibility will create freedom and new opportunities. Move through this and feel renewed and alive as though your own personal evolution is finally, finally underway. It will never be too late. The tests and the subsequent wisdom of this life are here and they're so worthwhile that it will create your beautiful legacy for generations to come. You will rise up from this, okay? As the phoenix is reborn from the ashes, just as the moon will wax and grow full once again, have hope, but do spend some time in contemplation. And we see our fairy does look contemplative. Again, she's diving deep. She's getting into those emotions. She's really reaching at the, the darkness within. Those things I always tell you on that new moon phase to face and embrace. So with this eclipse energy, it's talking about getting us ready for that. The things that we don't want to hear. We don't want to let go. We don't want to leave that job. You know, we don't want to leave that relationship. Things that are toxic and unhealthy for us. We need to look at those things. So right now, really dive deep, like I said, and try and find balance in yourself. Um, and be honest with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You're not going to heal, even when you're in therapy. If you lie to the therapist, you're never going to get through this. You're only kidding yourself. These are times of letting things go and heal. Now, number 13 is the number of alchemy, too, in transformation. It's a master number. Um, no, excuse me, 15 is. But 1 and 3 is 4, so we're grounding stability here. So we have some balances needed, but she's saying catch me here to trust and surrender. It's a leap of faith into the unknown. Very much an air kind of energy, beautiful. We do see some clouds here, all right? But she's, she's got a brave face. She's thrusting her chest forward, her arms are back. There's no fear here, it's kind of like the fool in the tarot when he kind of takes the leap of faith. But he's not paying attention, she's looking straight ahead. She sees where she's going. And you have all of these beautiful crows here helping her along. So this is without fear. This is knowing that it's time. You need to trust that inner voice, your intuition, that deep, dark, um, creative part of you that's always whispering to you. That's where your inspiration comes from, okay? You ever notice when you're really diving into something, you don't even realize you've worked at it for six hours, you didn't eat or drink anything or go to the bathroom? See, that's when inspiration comes through. And this is what this is like. Feel inspired, be ready to take that leap of faith, hold your breath, clutch, clutch your chest, and just go. Trust that you won't fall. This is the time that you need to heal. You can let all these things go right now. And like I said, with a leap of faith, it is about trusting that you're going to be all right after whatever this is passes. So let's see, it says it's time to take a chance that others may see as very risky, but it is time. And if not now, when? On a mundane level, this beautiful card can indicate a person who takes what others may judge to be almost a crazy risk. Okay? It may represent a person leaving a safe job. I was just saying that. Entering a new relationship or wholeheartedly making a move in life without having examined all the consequences. That's a leap of faith, you know? That's free and very Aquarian energy. Adventure-seeking, shocking change. Like, is it out of the blue? Just going for it. Unencumbered, okay? Okay? All right, let's see what else it says. But she's not someone who's foolhardy. She doesn't take crazy risks because she's only acting in faith that the path of courage and trust is the only path she can take. 
When she acts out of inner guidance, there is nothing to fear, and thus fears are not realized. Her feet are strong and bare. Okay, we'll leave the safety zone, and the healing path will be carried forward with her into the unknown adventure. She has transcended. So we're, again, we're talking about this transformation. That's what these eclipses are about. Remember, we were just saying that. Maturation, evolution, transformation. Very alchemical process. And then we end with 32. So number five, that's a very exciting number, right? That's a lot of creative energy, and it's beauty's truth. Beauty, physical pleasure, and sensuality. Now, that's very Leo, I got to tell you. And that's coming up, okay? Leo is about fun, sex for pleasure, creativity, creating anything, even life, because it's children. Fifth house is fun, pleasure, things that you do um, and enjoy, vacations, things like that. And it's beauty's truth. I love the toadstool there. And the butterfly we know is another card of transformation and transcendence. We know that the butterfly comes from the cocoon through great pain and much liberating, liberating labor, it transformed into this other energy. It's, it's what it was is now something different because that's what we are. Every breath we change. We are who we are and we always will be who we are, just in different form. So we're talking about creative energy here. Let's see. It's time to harness and radiate your own beauty and to realize that by acknowledging your own unique attractiveness and your own beautiful qualities, you will begin to be beauty. Now, that's not only in a physical sense. Mentally, we can transmute energies and become a beautiful mind instead of one that's angry, miserable. Um, your heart energies, healing and emotional release, you can transcend that and transmute that negative energy. Yes, it can be spiritual as well, belief systems that you once held on to that you are changing in your life, you know? And it might have been very painful for you to make this decision. That's what the butterfly goes through when it tries to get out of its cocoon. Okay, if you are struggling with the truth of your beauty, sit before a mirror on a Friday night and focus within on love. See this love radiate out from within and begin to glow. As you do, watch your beauty grow. It's saying here, it's simply coming out from hiding here. If it feels stressful or daunting, I understand. Looking at yourself in the mirror without moving your eyes from yourself and saying I love you with your name is very difficult. It might take you a long time to not blink, not look away, or not cry. But that's where it must begin, okay, for all of us. So that's what they're talking about, struggling. But the world will benefit, okay? And you'll be a kinder, happier, or sweeter person, or more generous, which is very Leo energy, um, when you believe in your own self and your own inner beauty, okay? It's not just the vessel. It is the soul. It's just terrible what our society depicts for us. And the fairies do this, and there's not one who is not divine to look upon. Having beauty will not make you weak or vulnerable, vain or foolish, all these are cliches, and you do not believe in the lie anymore, do you? Fairies have no judgment regarding types of beauty. They are loving and kind, and those who keep the same values are beautiful in turn. Do not deny yourself this form of self-love, where it has much power, magic, and healing in it. And that, again, is another card of healing. So we know that with this eclipse, we are stirring up a lot of deep emotions about the self here. And again, depending on what house it falls in for you, but it's got to be about freedom for you with this Aquarian energy. Things coming from, like I said, um, your higher mind, out of the blue, like a satellite. Tune into it. If you can, sit and meditate at the time of the total um, eclipse and also with the full moon lunar eclipse, sit and meditate and ask spirit, ask your higher self, God, source, whatever you call it, what is it that I need to mature and evolve and where is it that I need to release and heal in calm, letting go of pain and suffering from people in my life, things in my life, places in my life, addictions, mean people, arguments, abuse, violence, whatever you've experienced and it's about drumming it all up facing the pain, grieving over it, forgiving, even yourself, and saying that you are worthy and loving. And try your best to release it. Now, I know it's not always easy to do in the one shot. You know, we'd all be doing that. You can't just snap your fingers. But use the energy. Ride this wave right now, okay? This energy wave, all right? That shocking, electrifying wave. And release 
and heal. Send it out to the universe. It's vast, infinite space can take all of our pains, all of our sufferings, and transmute it into something beautiful. Well, thank you, spirit and fairies, for this beautiful reading. I do hope that it helps give you some guidance and peace. And remember, you are a conduit, and maybe this will help someone else if it doesn't make sense to you right now. But do try and spend some time in meditation or in prayer or clearing for yourself at the time of this full moon in Aquarius. Thank you again to everyone who's been with me and for watching. I do appreciate all of you. Thank you. I wish you the best.